Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny, we're gardening here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today we're talking about a plant disease that has affected my garden called Aster Yellows Disease. Come with me, let's talk about what that disease is, how it affects your plants, and what you can do about it. So I need to preface all of this video information with the statement that I am no expert on plant diseases. I have done research on the internet this morning just in time for me to talk to you about it. So you may want to research this yourself and make sure that the stuff that I'm telling you matches with what you're seeing in your own research as well. But here's what I have found out about Aster Yellow's disease. It's a, it's a caused by a bacteria or a phytoplasma. Is that what they called it? Hmm, I don't remember. Anyway, it's caused by a bacteria that is carried from plant to plant by a specific insect. The insect is called the aster leafhopper. It's a little teeny tiny um, grasshopper type of, of insect. So the bacteria can only survive in two places. One is in the veins, the vascular system of a plant. And the second place it can survive is in the guts of a, um, an aster leafhopper. So what happens is this leafhopper picks up the bacteria from a plant and the bacteria is ingested when the leafhopper eats the plant. Then that bacteria lives in the guts of the leafhopper and then turns itself uh, around and gets itself all into the internal system of the leafhopper. And then finally it, it shows up about two weeks later, from what I understand, in the saliva of the leafhopper. So uh, then that leafhopper goes and every time it eats a plant, it infects that plant with the bacteria in its saliva. This disease can find itself in a lot of different kinds of vegetable crops, also flowering annuals, perennials, and perennial weeds. So uh, it, uh, from my research, it doesn't seem to affect shrubs or trees, although I don't know if that's the case or not, but I do know that it does affect um, perennial flowering plants. So also in my research this morning, I found out that scientists think that if your cone flowers are affected, then it might not be Aster Yellow's disease. It might be a mite that is so far not yet fully researched. And so there's some debate as to whether Aster Yellow's disease is um, what is affecting all the plants that we see. That's just something to keep in mind. Uh, if it does turn out to be that the plant is infected by this mite problem and not by Aster Yellow's disease, then the mite problem could be um, solved by um, pesticides or some other solution. But if it's Aster Yellow's disease, there's no cure. It, it is a bacteria that lives until the plant dies or until the leafhopper dies. Once those two host organisms die, then the bacteria in that host organism will die as well. So what that means is that as long as you have the plant in the ground and the plant is alive, the, the bacteria lives in the plant as well. What does it look like in a plant? Well, um, first of all, the, uh, it stunts the growth of the plant. And so over the course of the season, especially if it's infected early in the planting season, the plant will stay small, it will be malformed, the, um, some of the stems will cluster together strangely, and then the flowers will be malformed as well. They will uh, be disfigured, they will look odd. Um, also, the, um, from the bottom of the plant up toward the tip of the plant, it will start to turn yellow. It will look a lot like chlorosis, so you might be confused and think that you have a chlorosis problem until you see that the flowers are malformed. When a plant has Aster Yellow's disease, there is no cure for it. There's no pesticide, there's no herbicide, there's no sort of systemic uh, treatment. There's nothing that you can do that will kill that bacteria. The only way the bacteria dies is through uh, the death of the plant or the death of the leaf hopper that is carrying the bacteria. So you have to remove the plant. There's no fixing it. Um, if you don't remove the plant, then of course the leaf hopper may find your plant and love it and carry it on to your other plants in your garden. And you don't want to lose all of your plants to that. So 
Now I have not visibly seen any leaf hoppers on this, but you know, I don't sit out here and stare at this all day. So who knows what's happening out here while I'm not here. So the solution for me today is to dig this out, put it in the compost bin under the compost. You wanna bury it in your compost pile. That will kill the plant. It will bury it so that you can't have any other insects chewing on it and, and then spreading that bacteria around. And um, once the plant is dead in the compost pile, the bacteria dies as well because its host is dead. So you can compost these plants, but you need to bury them. So I have a plant here that is a powwow wild berry coneflower. I have two of them here. And then over there, I have two more. And one of the plants is infected, I think, with Aster Yellow's disease, and the other is not yet. So what I'm hoping is that I'll be able to get rid of this plant, keep this one. I'm going to dig this plant out, and then in its place, I have another healthy plant that I'm gonna put in its place. I actually have two more, so I'm gonna turn this uh, duet of coneflowers into a trio of coneflowers here. And so that's my project for the day. Now, I mentioned earlier that there's a mite that scientists think maybe is the cause of some disease in coneflowers. It's possible that that is my problem here, not Aster Yellow's disease. But I'm gonna treat it as if it does have Aster Yellow's because I don't wanna take any chances and because the science isn't in, it's not clear on that mite thing and what to do about it. So I'm just gonna go with the worst case scenario and deal with it that way. You can see the two plants side by side. The one on the left is healthy, normal, not infected. It's flowers are normal and beautiful and there's no any sort of uh, issues with the leaves. On the infected plant you can see that the flowers are very malformed. The petals never developed into pink and the centers are malformed as well. Uh, here's a flower that is just is totally stunted. And then another symptom is that you get lots of clustering of things together in these little tight knots. As far as the leaf color, mine hasn't really turned yellow. This is from a tree nearby. Uh, but mine have a little bit of red discoloration on them. And that is another symptom that can be seen in this disease. As far as the job of fixing this problem, taking the plant out, putting the plant back in, there's nothing special about it. I'm just gonna dig the plant out, set it aside, and then put a little bit of plant tone fertilizer in the hole. Normally I would use biotone, but I don't have any biotone, so, oh well. The plant tone will give it a little boost of fertilizer and uh, make it a little bit healthy. I'm not gonna go overboard with the plant tone at this time of year. And so then I'll just put the plant in the hole and cover it up and then I'll do the same for the third plant. These coneflowers have only been in the ground for three or four weeks so they haven't even really rooted in. So easy peasy. much bigger than the last one, so I actually need to make my hole bigger. Alright, so I just need to select my location for the third plant that wasn't here before. I think I'll swing it back here, kind of in a curve this way. change my plan because when I tried to dig that hole back there 
deep enough for this two gallon pot. I ran into a tree root that was not budging. So I moved my plant up here. Now I have a curve going this way and that'll give me some space right here to nestle something pretty in front of this little group. And I have totally messed up my mulch. Oh well, nothing's perfect, is it? I could have taken better care of my mulch, but I just forgot, so here we are. I'm building a little watering well collar here because we're on a downslope, so I want the water that I put on this to stay near the root zone, so I'm gonna build up a little collar for it. Okay, now this diseased plant needs to go buried in the compost pile, way down deep underneath where no leaf hoppers can find it. I don't think any leaf miner is gonna find that in there. Oops, I mean, I mean leaf hopper. All right, all done. Is it perfect? No, this one is too far that way. Should be a little closer to that one. Oh well, nothing in life is perfect, but I'm glad to have that diseased plant out of there. And now we're going to have lots of beautiful color in this garden next fall. I'm really concentrating on getting fall color in here because that is often where my downfall is as far as garden design. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned a little bit about a plant disease that might be affecting you and how to deal with it. If you know more about Aster Yellow's disease, please put this stuff in the comments down below. As I said, I am no expert. I just did a little bit of research this morning and this is what I found. If you know more, tell us more. We'd all love to learn. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you'll come back and watch more videos here at Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'll see you in another video real soon. Bye-bye, friends.